So I I just take uh, uh, the sequence a little further, right? And uh, while Krishna has already preempted what is servant leadership, uh, I'm sure all of you have heard servant leadership. That is one of the leadership you know, traits in which you can affect coaching. Okay? But let's understand what it is all about. Okay. Uh, but before that, uh, there is something that I would like you all to, you know, uh, Krishna touched upon it. And I think most of you all agreed also that we can keep talking until the cows come home, but still you don't take that one single action, nothing's going to happen, right? Yeah. So, the world I come from, uh, it's all about action. In fact, I learnt leadership not in a classroom. I never learnt leadership actually. It's not taught to us. In the academy, right till wherever you go to, leadership is not taught. It is taught as a subject in the higher defense management course, which is after about 20 years of service. Okay. In a totally different context, strategic leadership. So, it is learned on the ground. Therefore, what has to be understood is, it's not that uh, I'm trying to, uh, you know, invalidate leadership being taught in class. But what I'm trying to say is, if you are teaching leadership in a class and it's not followed up by action, it's a no And in us, when it's taught in class, it makes a lot of sense because we know what we've done. And then you realize, oh, this is what I've done. Okay? So, the, this is the fundamental thing in which I approach all the time because whatever I teach right now, whatever Krishna has taught, if you don't put it into action, it's of no use. Yeah? So, to that I would like to say, see, we all have an intent. The intent is, and has been, I think, since morning, the intention of this program has come out many times. Why are you here? Okay, what's your intent? Why do you want to do this, right? And then there is something called the reality. If you see there are two different things. I intend to do many things, but the reality is something different. Then you put it into action, right? This gap, okay, the velocity at which you go in this gap will decide the power you have as a facilitator, as a coach or whatever. You get it? The faster you go from it to reality is your velocity. So, you may say that, oh, I need practice one year, then I will become, that's a velocity. Oh, I become tomorrow itself, that's not a velocity, but it will come to the choice. So, the thing which, this velocity is dictated by what? It is dictated by two things, okay? One is your stories, justifications. Okay, the, uh, and this is very, very important. And this is because as a facilitator, you should also know that this is how your, the people you are dealing with are also working in the same stars. You see, if you have reasons, no? they are inhibitors. We spoke about inhibitors in the morning, mm -hmm. but we didn't go into detail as to what those inhibitors are. Inhibitors come in the form of reasons. Like, I can't do this, I have an important meeting coming up. Huh? Uh, the delivery has to take place tomorrow, it's critical, so we can have this, this facilitation can that happen some of the time. Everything seems to be important other than the facilitation, right? That's how it is, that's the reality, my friends. That's how it will come to you. It will never come like, oh, come do facilitation and this is the space given and psychologically everybody is aligned. It will never happen like that. It will always come with a bag full of reasons, a bag full of stories and a bag full of justifications. So if someone said, like, you know, uh, how to deal with senior management, it is because you are operating in these three. So you have to you have to see how you can get out of this. And also ensure, if you learn it this, and if you are able to get this, I'm sure because your people who you are facilitating, they are also in that state because of this one. We are all bound by these three things. He also got, got some reason. I can't do this because. The moment because comes, there's a reason. Because it's always followed by reason. Yeah? And there is another funny word which is used, right? But. but. Yeah? I'm sure all of you are right. But. Yeah? I could do this, but. The moment he says, but, there's no possibility. <laughs> it's zero. So you can make out in a person's language what his intention is. Okay? It's like, I've been doing this, but I've been trying to do it. Now, can you try to do anything? If I were to tell you, Tanma, to try to get up, 
Kangana will either get up or he'll be there. There's no trying. Correct? This is what I used to tell in the army. There's no trying, my friend. Sir, I'm trying to be work hard. There's no trying to work hard. You should give a kick in the face, but what is trying? We don't understand what trying is. Either you do it or you don't do it. Either you stick to it or you get out. That's only way. Yeah. So these are the things I have learned from in the trench. And I'm telling you. So when I hear people say, I'm trying, I'm trying, sometimes I just, you know, I say, okay, it's fine. That means he's not going to do anything about it. Because either he does it, he doesn't or, do it. or he doesn't do it. That is also fine. But at least when he says, I don't, I don't do it, I have something to work with him. But if he says, I'm trying, do you see? That is also neutral, but that's not <laughs> neutral. <laughs> <laughs> and I am telling you, you will find such kind of stuff at the top and bottom. In the strategic leadership, we are trying. You have to immediately tell, as as person who gauges health, you should know what's happening. Either you should tell, I have been doing it, but it's just not working. I am not getting time. The budgets are not there. I am not getting a buy-in. Customer is not putting a lot of pressure. All that is understandable. understandable. But the moment they say that you are trying, you can do it. So, remember this, okay. So, why I wanted to tell you is this is the velocity with which, and your butts, your trains are all here. So, tomorrow for whatever reason, whichever way you want to practice, you don't want to practice, whichever method or the cadence you want to go in, because you have a personal thing also, just look at these three, whether you are moving in this, and justification is the biggest thing. We are quick to justify. Okay. Even, even if I ask you as to why you are late, there will be a reason as to why you are late. That's a justification. Is it required? It's not required. Because that justification, what is it doing? You are trying to save yourself from a particular situation. Actual learning has not happened. Because that person also, by your justification, will switch off. So as facilitators, you should know whether they are justified, they are invalidating, whether they are validating. At the same time, like he said, why is food? You don't have to, because the moment you cut them off, then you are also part of the group. But you should be there. You have to be with them. You have to be with them. And that is how I will come to the next one. And I want to ask you a question, right? Uh, we all say that it's mindset, right? Everything is mindset. We have been speaking that we are trying to align mindsets. Mindsets. So let me ask you a very, very interesting question. Mindset comes from, is a function of the? Mind. Mind? Correct. Where is your mind? That's a good question. What process? Where? Where? Show it, no? It can be multiple parts, something like that. Yeah. Heart. Even the cells also have their own mind. Yeah. Okay. Okay. That's one way of seeing it. But when you say that I'm losing my mind, people usually show head. But what are you losing? Focus. Hmm? Sure. So, okay, you're losing focus, is it? Show me focus. focus. Is it? So, <laughs> <laughs> losing the way we build analogies and we stick to it. We stick to it. If you see even focus, no? there's nothing called focus. Only focus. You do this also, focus, focus. <laughs> but naturally, you can't focus. It's horse riding focus. Yeah, it's horse riding focus. You're not a horse. So, when you ask, where is the mind, so the next question, so it's a question, okay. I have an answer but doesn't matter. If you want to know, if you don't know where your mind is, then where is your eye? Okay. Tell me, I did this, I failed, I did this, I can't do this, I can't do this, I have problem with senior leadership, all that comes, no? I you know, where is that eye? I is the ego. Is it? That's what, how you separate yourself. Yeah, that is how that I is trying to again justify that the I is I. So it is ego. Yeah, it's fine. But what you have to know is this I, how important it is in your life? Mm, not that important. <laughs> <laughs> it's important. Yeah? The we or the us, that is one way of looking at it. That is, that's what we are fundamentally trying to say. Okay, but if you see this I know it takes over, when you say I failed, we say this right, and I am saying this for a reason, I am coming to that, 
When you say I failed, I failed. But did you fail? Are you are you designed to fail? No. Humans are not designed to fail. We don't like I said in the morning, right? Animals don't know what failure. Even when they are born, they don't know what failure is. Failure has been given a meaning, and it's given a construct. We attach ourselves to that construct. Yes. Okay. And for the rest of our life. Uh, we play within that concept only. Right? So someone was talking of context. So do you get that context? Anchors us down. Exactly, because for us, failure means anchoring down. Do you get that? And some people say, failure got me up. You can you, you hear so many things. Because that is the way. Because for him, failure doesn't mean anchoring down. Failure is just another facet of life. So it's a mindset again. So this I know when you say I failed. You know what happens when you say I failed? What is the next step you will do? What are you going to fix or what are you going to find, work on? What are the lessons you No, the fact is you will work on this, no. You will try to correct yourself. Whereas you not failed, you failed in the task. Correct? You failed in the task. You didn't fail. So when you want to correct it, what do you correct? This. We go and end up doing this and repeatedly keep doing this. So if you are not getting frustrated, what else will you do? Yeah? We keep blaming others. I can't do this. I can't do this. Because this is where that I come. That ego, no? It comes in various manifested forms. The moment you say, I, I, I. I heard in the morning, no? You said, I am lazy, right? Yeah. yeah. So the moment you say, I am lazy. So do you see there is nothing to move after that? Because it is I and you don't know. Because I, if you knew, you would have done something about it. I am giving you. See, this is how you coach. When, when it's not about finding solutions. You get this into you, you will be able to see it as other people. Basically, you are saying that you are identifying yourself with that. Exactly. Detach, no? Detach from the problem. Someone, Krishna had said, don't become the problem. Put it into your life also, no? Detach yourself from your issues. They are not problems. Even if they are problem, it's just a word again. Problem is nothing. I am telling all this because, see, when we used to go to uh, fight terrorists, you know, if I have a story that what a terrorist is, he's a human being, he's that, he's a father, brother, do you think it will affect? He's going to hit me first. Similarly, there's another way of looking at it. He's an idiot, he's a terrorist, he's a cockroach, this, that. Do you think I'm going to be a soldier when I fight with him? No. It is just that I've got a weapon, so I might, the, the beast in me might come out. I might torture him once. That's what happens. I'm, I'm, I hope you're getting it. Yeah? So, this is where you have to be. The, uh, how you attach yourself in that situation to the I know plays a big part. That is why in, in combat, when we say that we have soldiers, you know, how's the Josh? I keep laughing at it. They show, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm taking bits here. When they say, how's the Josh? Yes, sir, good, sir, whatever they showed in the movies. It doesn't happen, okay? <laughs> it doesn't happen like that, you know, because we don't want gladiators. We don't want Rambo's to go there and, uh, you know, uh, first of all, kill himself and take another ten days. There's a lot of investment which takes place in each of the people. Okay, that bad business. You can't take twenty guys and put them on the street and tell them to walk one behind the other. Bad business. You know, this is how it is shown in the movies. That's not how you do it. There's a there's a method. Okay, and that method comes from years and years of experience and hard training. There is no doubt in that. Okay, so why I'm telling you this is that when he says, "Sir, Pakistan ko wo kar denge, ye kar denge," like Sunny Deol says, right? It is so. Imagine a guy like that when he's in front of a Pakistani. He'll be a brute. That's not what a soldier is. A soldier is a professional soldier. He's getting money. He's getting paid. There is ethics. There are people around watching it. So it's a huge, it's a, it's a balance which we play with. So sometimes when they talk like that, there have been times when you have to admonish that guy and tell him. It, it may be very funny to, for you all to know this, but it is there. We have to tell them, relax. You know, don't be a gladiator. We need team people. And there is a method. It's a professional army. You know, we have to go and we will do it. We will get it, but we will get him on our terms. The rules of engagement, right? We have it. So why I'm telling you this is, if this starts playing, imagine if the commander's intent in my scheme of things or in your scheme of things, the CEO works with his eye, you know what happens? 
it affects everybody else, right? That is what we call a toxic and not happening all because this is playing a big part on it. As coaches, as facilitators, this should disappear. And that is practice. Okay, we can tell you many things, Krishna has given you tools, past statements, all that is fine. But if it works without this disappearing, nothing is happening. Then it happens to what I said. You understand between understanding and discovery? See, we all understand things. Knowledge, no? When you get a lot of knowledge, you understand. So if I ask, did you understand past statement Pratik? Mm -hmm. I understood. Correct? So, okay, you understood. So, there's no call for action. But if Pratik understood, goes out and takes action, what is Pratik going to encounter? Sort of hurdles, issues. Yeah, and when you are clearing that, what is happening? On the summit or part two. Exactly, you use the right word, my friend. Most of us only understand, we do not go into the realm of discovery. Okay? As coaches, as facilitators, please put yourself more in realms of discovery. What have you discovered today? What have you discovered today? Not what we understood today. Even these two days, you know, understand, you can understand many things. I can give you a plethora of information, a lot of gyan, your head will be heavy, you walk out, you just disappear, like Thanos. <laughs> you have to <laughs> discover. You see, in discovery is failure, in discovery is success, in discovery is life. Because that is what you talk about. You never talk about something you understood. You always will talk about something you discovered. And that happens only in action. Do you know that if Christopher Columbus didn't think what is on the other side, or Vasco da Gama didn't think why he should go there, he discovered, right? They didn't understand. They understood everything. Everyone understood. But some few people ventured to discover. They are the ones who then chart history. So as a coach, please don't understand concepts. Please don't understand agile. Please don't understand anything. Discover it. And that discovery, you know what the beautiful thing about it is? It is unique to you. What I discover is unique to me. What you discover is unique to you. If we share a discovery together, that is good enough. Okay. So. This is important. What have you discovered? Like today, what have you discovered over yourself? There are certain things you have discovered. In the realms of understanding, it will not happen. Discovery happens when you take action. Take action, you will discover something. Take action, you will discover something. Okay? So I just want to tell you this because this comes to my to the topic which I want to take. Because if you discover and you dis, dis, disappear the I, so what kind of leadership trait most is most suited for coaching and facilitation. Yeah, so that's a very nice word, right? So let's understand this. Have you read that article? The actual essay of servant leadership? Yeah, I just sent it to you on WhatsApp. It's an essay, it's a 27 page. Yeah, that's the original thing. So what I'm going to talk is not what I understood. What I'm going to talk is what I discovered from that. Yeah. So this is servant leadership. Okay. So what is servant leadership? So before we get into servant leadership, I want you to tell me. When I say this word, what do you understand? Servant. So, yeah. To serve. To serve. Okay. And just tell me what comes in your mind. First thing when you learn servant. Ah, sir. Be available for the purpose. Be available. Okay. And also, think in a somebody else. No, else. servant, servant in everyday life. Assist. 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 Huh? Assist. 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 Okay. Again, servant in everyday life. Ask the lady in the house. She'll tell you what is how important the servant is. Right? <laughs> yeah. so, help others. Help. Okay. Assist. Okay. Fine. 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 What else is when you think of servant? What else comes in your mind? Let's be frank. Support. Okay, supportive. What else? Do you all like your servants? Not always. Not always. <laughs> do you do you feel that uh, they are, you know, they can give you something in life, or how do you treat them? How do you how do we treat our servants? 
Come on, let's be frank. But we go. Oh. At least with salary or anything what you offer to eat, with those things we should fairly treat them. No, like it's not what we should. <coughs> <coughs> we look at them. How does society look at service? <coughs> oh, you should not sit on your sofa. Yeah, so do you see that? Yeah, yeah, you see that. Yeah, do you see that? You know, they are meant to obey. Right? They are not supposed to talk too much. Yeah? Don't talk. Uh, just do what you are told. So don't do whatever you feel like. Don't do whatever you feel like. No innovations. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, no innovations. Very no good. Innovation. <laughs> <laughs> don't go and start doing things on your own. Speak when you're spoken to. It's very simple. They say, speak when you're spoken to. Speak when you're spoken to. Speak when you're spoken to. Yeah, what else? Do you like them to be... Uh, Tell, do, do, do you like your servants to tell you what to do? Sir. Do you like them to talk in a way, a very authoritative way to you? No. Would you Nowadays know? they are demanding. <laughs> yeah. 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 Exactly. Yeah. So when they are doing it, do you like it? No. Do you say, oh, this is the new emergent India? <laughs> <laughs> and I am seeing... <laughs> <laughs> Digital India. Yeah. yeah, so this is, the, this is great. Do you say it like that or do you get annoyed? I think Arnab will come with that statement. <laughs> So, do you see that, you know, the, you like them to be subjugated? Yeah. That's how it is. Yeah? Correct? So, this is what our analogy of the servant is. Now, let me see what's a leader. Can you tell me what all do you feel? What, what comes into your mind when you think of a leader? Leader who basically helps other people to grow. Okay, grow. Okay, good. Growth. Shield. So Shield. Motivates. Motivates. Mentality listener. Okay. Facilitator. Okay. Okay. Help. Communication. Help. Okay. Align, align everyone to the same vision. Okay. Visionary. Okay. Go, leader. What is leader? Leads for example. Example. Shepherd. Shepherds. Yeah, so, so do you see, do you see, all this what I have written has come from this room, yeah. from this from this set of human beings, now tell me, don't you see it's exactly opposite, what is here is there. Yes. So yes. how did you match this to that? How are we matching and we talk on the servant leadership? <laughs> <laughs> it's good to have servant leadership, servant leadership. Yeah. See, you see our core, you know, belief of these two words. It's totally opposite. 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 There's a disconnect. So if you don't get the, if this disconnect prevails, and it prevails, it's come out. How are you understanding servant leadership? Be servant to your leader. Yeah, see, do you see that then, then you start understanding it in this way? <laughs> <laughs> you become the servant first, so become a Yeah, so it comes out as oh leader should be like a servant. <laughs> <laughs> that means uh, you know, he should be humble, he should be quiet, he should be, he should be like this, he should just keep Some listening. Reason. This is how it comes out because that servant analogy is from misunderstanding. He should be simple, he shouldn't be flamboyant, he should drink uh, tea with, uh, in a teacup. Yeah. This is how it is coming out. You know, CEOs and all, oh, I have to be a servant leader, so look very frugal. <laughs> you missed the port, my friend. Yeah. That is why if you see, there is a purpose why it's written, servant, it's not servant leadership, this, this is the corruption of the word. You Ooh, see that yeah. essay, it's written servant as leader. Servant as leader. Okay. There is nothing called servant leader. That is just to understand. But if you want to really get it, it is servant as leader. Now you see, it is not leader as servant. Now there is a difference there also. Now you know what people do? They first want to become a leader, then they want to become a servant. Like, once I become a CEO, then I will serve. <laughs> it doesn't work like that. That's the common emotion. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's a common emotion and that's, that's also the fashionable trend. It's a fashionable trend, you know. I am now, I've got four or five teams, so now I will serve. I'm going to be of service. It's so wrong. 
you just didn't get the concept because you cannot, it's written there. If you read it, he says it. He says that it is not that you become a leader and then you think of serving. You have to first serve, then become a leader. Very powerful. Okay? And why is it effective in coaching and facilitation? Why are we talking about it? Yeah? What is the essence of servant leadership? The essence of this, I mean, you know, serving. Okay? The boundaries of all what we have. Okay, great. So let me generate a conversation by just using a small little meta model. You know what a meta model is? Krishna has been using it this morning. Those who have been, those who have caught it, have caught it, those who have not caught it, you will discover it. Okay, what's, I'll tell you. Uh, the Lord is my shepherd, right? And Jesus serves, right? You get that? What context is that serve? The Lord God serves us. What context is service there? Do you see that the entire concept of service changes? <coughs> servant? Jesus is the servant of the God, right? And all those who follow the faith are servants of the faith, right? All servants who serve the public are government servants, right? You see that? I was a government servant. Why? Which servant are we talking about? That is the servant he is talking of actually, not what we spoke is. Yeah. So, when you look at God being a servant, right? Or the Messiah is a servant. God is not a servant. God is God. The Messiah, in, in all the religions, there is a Messiah who has come down and who has helped mankind and God. You take any religion. That is the, that is the narrative. Correct. So, from that narrative you tell, what is the servant doing? Okay, very nice. Okay, taking neutrality. Okay, being neutral. Listening. Listening. Okay. Wisdom. Helping. Yeah, wisdom. Sharing it rather. Yeah. Right? Mentoring, coaching. Mentoring, coaching, facilitating, correct? Helping, correct. Yeah. And what is not doing? Not doing. What does the Messiah not do? Not doing. He doesn't spoon feed. Exactly. He doesn't spoon feed. He challenges the quotient. Exactly. Very nice. He challenges yeah, the status quo. He challenges the status quo. Okay. What else? And, uh, he enables. Is he uh, a no, guy? He, is he a guy who agrees to whatever is there and the established notions? No, he challenges it, right? Okay. All the messiahs have challenged the... That is why they became that. <coughs> yeah, because they have to change the system. That's what they okay. came for. So are they... Change agents? Yeah. Change agents. Absolutely. They force us to think. They are yeah. transformation coaches. So. <laughs> yeah. What else? What else? <laughs> Where the go? What else don't they go to? Powerful forces. Powerful forces. Ah, they are powerful forces. <laughs> Forcing people to think. Yeah. Powerful forces. Yeah. Yes. What else? What do they not do? I want to know what they don't do. They don't do it they themselves. Don't tell them what to do. Exactly. They are not consultants. They don't hold <laughs> a hand. That is why they don't hold a hand. No messiah said that if you do this, you will get this. It has all been corrupted over uh -huh. after centuries. If you read the scripture, there is no way there. They are like, like, knock and it shall be answered. Yes. See and it shall be found. Yeah, like, that's what he's saying. Right. It's your journey, dude, not mine. That's what he's saying. Yeah. Right. Like Krishna didn't participate in the war, but yes. he was yeah. guiding. I mean, my own point. Exactly. Was that. The moment you take, did, did you see how I shifted the thought? The moment you put servant in the realms of a messiah, Lord, it is. You get it. Yes. Then you say, ah, oh, see how it's coming out. Yeah. So this is from the time immortal. Do you see the moment you said servant? Do you see how powerful this is to become a leader, a coach, a facilitator? Hmm. See, no Messiah gives you questions, uh, answers, solutions. Hmm. Does any does any book give you solutions? No. Yes. You have to read between the lines, right? Hmm. And find the path. There is. A... It has always been there. <laughs> Off topic. There is something called hero's journey, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay. We'll talk about that. Yeah, yeah, no. So this, this is see all these books, the secret, 
any book you say, the fundamental thing is go figure out, discover. Yeah, the, the servant in the mount, right? They say the servant in the mount, the Ten Commandments. It's, it's very generalized, but if you look at it from a perspective, it's very powerful. So you have to develop your leadership quotient as, no, I'm saying it again. You know, See, listen to what I'm saying. Your leadership quotient as a coach, as a facilitator, because you mean many other things also. It is never the other way around. A coach as a leader, a facilitator, it, you will fail. You can't just be one thing, you have to be many things. Okay? If you are a leader as a coach, as a facilitator, look at it from servant from this point of view. You will get it. It will come to you immediately. When you go to a temple or Place, place of worship. Okay, what do you go with? A faith. hope, faith, faith, belief, hope, and a promise. Okay, there are people. Exceptions to rules are there, but the common good. Do you get an immediate solution? No, no. It is just a reinforcement of the belief with which you come out with. Yes. And what does it tell you? Take new actions, my friend. Either we pray five times a day, go over and heal, whatever it is, but it's an action. And come back after some time again, let's talk. So where is the solution here? Where is the bias here? Where is everything? We've been doing it actually nowadays. So if you understand it from this perspective, you will get what coaching and you know, facilitating, whatever we may talk about now. The fundamental aspect of understanding. So, in servant leadership, when you talk of servant and when you talk of leadership, you have to see servant as a leader. Please don't look at it as servant leadership. It, it doesn't exist actually. You'll hear, you'll see a lot of articles, but they are generated articles from that book, from that essay. Okay, that essay is a seminal essay. That's the source. That's the source. And if you see it, it makes a lot of sense. Again, I'm going back to the Messiah. You can take anyone, whoever you feel is your, you know, uh, the, the, the source of your religion. Do they ever, they give you promise, they give you a promise, right? Do they ever tell you how to do it? No. Do they ever tell you that if you do this, 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 this will happen? No. So you see, the answer is there. Social media got so silly. So the thing is, you know, there's another thing which a servant uh, this is there which has not come. And for me that's a very powerful word. You know, he does something which no one does. Correct? Heals. Okay, yes, yes. Oh I thought that's not in the context. He heals. He heals. People go to him with problems. He is. And he heals you. Does he talk to you? No. Who are they talking to? They are talking to you. They are praying, right? And in that prayer, they are healed. He is just there. So, you were asking about, Krishna was asking about powerful questions and all that, right? Without the understanding. You were talking about context. Does context matter? No. You think all the hundred people who are praying are praying for one thing? No. no. Where is the context? The intent is there. That whoever comes is healed. Yeah, yeah that's exactly your right. The analogy goes well because in Reiki and all those things they said that you don't need to know what is the element. Yeah. You just have the intention, the source will flow through. Exactly. And prayer is nothing but a form of healing yourself. And as a coach, as a facilitator, are you there to heal them? See, that is only the result. You are really with them. You are really with them. You will know what to heal. Otherwise, you will come. Ah, let me heal you. It doesn't work like that. Right? <laughs> that also doesn't work. Actually, in US, you can get into jail. You know. If yeah. You exactly. Thing. So it is psychological. And Krishna said, psychological safety. It is this one. You are, you are creating. You are healing those areas which are you know, psychologically a little disbalanced. And that is a huge thing. It is such a big honor, actually, not a responsibility. Isn't it an honor? You know, I go, I, I go to this company, and you know, whatever is happening there, there are perceptions flying all over the place. I see myself as a healer. And what does happen to a healer uh, when, 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 when these people, these great people, are healed? Have they taken credit? 
Have they taken credit or has credit been assigned to them? There are different Credit is assigned to them. Exactly. When Jesus Christ became Jesus Christ, he didn't, be, he didn't say, I am the Lord or I am the Messiah. Those 12 guys who went after him told him. Uh, you get what I am saying. Yeah. It's your, you know that. Your first follower is what defines you as a leader. No leader can stand up and say, I am a leader. It's his followers who tell him that you are the leader. Yeah. A leader is defined by his followers. Okay, there's a there's a YouTube video of this first follower. You've seen that? I'll just show it to you. That's a brilliant video. Yeah. Yeah. Because if Jesus was nothing without his twelve apostles, you tell me if those twelve apostles went there. He's nothing. He would have been forgotten. Okay. Prophet Muhammad is nothing without his, uh, you know, his uh, group of little people, uh, Bilal and all these guys. Okay, Arjuna is nothing without Krishna, Krishna is nothing without Arjuna. Do you see that? It's a duality. And who defines whether this guy is great or not? No one has ever stood and said, I am great. It is other people who will tell that this guy is great. It, the leadership is defined. Not by you, it is by others. So, as a coach, whether they are effective or not effective, you have no control over it. They will only tell whether you are effective or not effective. If you see coach, trainer, anything, it doesn't matter. But where you can be, so you can ask, okay, Ranjit, then, you know, if everything is done, then where do you stand? What do you do? There are only two things which I can tell you, and this is something I hold, and I would like to tell you, and this is how it works in the organization I have come from and here. There are two things. To be of great service and contribution. These are the two things. Fundamental gifts you can give whoever comes in your way. Are you of service? And service is excellent service. We will talk about that. Not only service, excellent service and of contribution. Are you contributing? Are you contributing? Are you contributing? I think you touched upon it in a different frame, but that is a frame. Are you contributing to his growth, his health, his well-being? It's all healing, right? And contribution is nothing but healing. Healing is nothing but contribution. You cannot heal a person without contributing something. So when I say heal, I also would like to you know, caution you, but don't see them as sick people. That is again another analogy. Like, you say, no, I want to help you. It's a meta. Okay, let me tell you. When you say help, what does it mean? What does it mean? Okay, if I were to say, Anup, I want to help you. What is my meta working actually? Who do you help? Only friends. Who do you help? When you use the word help, when I say I want to help you, people, what am I giving out? Service. No. Okay. You only help helpless people. People like me. Helpless people. So do you see, when I say I want to help you, do you see where I am coming from by using that word? I want to help you. You know what Anup will tell? I don't need help. I am not helpless. Although the intent is there, but you know, you are giving out something. No, that happens. I, I mean, because what happens is we are working on very uh, tough program and uh, suddenly we got very bad feedback from the customer and one of our senior managers came and called an ex guy who was not within our team so we had to say that we want help on this then we are all here, why did you have to call it out of the, we don't need anybody's support, we can manage on our own because the moment is I want to help you, you know, some people may